There are a lot of games at the Sonic Amateur Games Expo every year, and unfortunately, I can't play them all. And I'm sure you don't want to either. So here's my list of the top 10 fan games and or indie games of Sage 2022. I can't be bothered with the mods or the frameworks, so those won't be included on this list. And of course, since I haven't been able to play every game in the exhibition, these are just going to be the ones that look the most appealing to me based on the event trailer. I played maybe a quarter of the games, so yeah, nowhere near all of them, but if you want to know my tastes, or just get some general recommendations, keep watching. Number 10, Demon Turf. I played the demo for Demon Turf back when it was first released on Steam a while back, and it's pretty good. It feels like a semi-two-dimensional hat in time as far as the game mechanics go. I personally find it a little clunky and the whole demonic aesthetic isn't really my favorite, but overall a pretty solid platformer. As is the case with the rest of the games on this list, I definitely still recommend it to anyone who's interested in it based on the gameplay footage. Number 9, Looney Balloony. Harold Krell has been working on this for a few years now and it's shaping up to be a really solid game. I can't tell you how many hours he's put into this thing and it shows. The concept is fun and interesting. It's like a way more fleshed out balloon fight. It has great music reminiscent of some of my favorite Sega Genesis tracks. It's got solid mechanics, good level design. I'm really looking forward to playing through the full game when it's complete, and I'll absolutely be contributing to this when and if he does a Kickstarter campaign. Number 8, Sonic World DX. I think I would rate this one higher if it had more original levels, but unfortunately that's not the case. Most of these levels are just ported or recreated from other Sonic games, which I've played like hundreds of times over. I mean, I'm not really opposed to playing them 101 times, especially in a fun fan-created game engine like this, but if there were some more original levels to play, it would definitely bump it up this list. Also, it loses a few points because it doesn't run on my stake deck. I mean my Steam deck. Number 7, Lunistus. This game feels just like a PS1 era 3D platformer in the best way possible. It's like Crash Bandicoot mixed with Gex 3, maybe throw some Spyro in there, at least as far as the gameplay and visual style goes. There don't seem to be any cutscenes yet, and there's obviously no voice acting or anything like that, which I think Lunistus would really benefit from. And based on the Steam page, it doesn't look like they're going to add anything like that, which is a bit of a shame, but oh well. Maybe in a potential sequel, eventually? Number 6, Project Rascal. This game feels great. It's another one of those momentum-based 3D Sonic clones that just takes the Sonic formula and improves on it in a bunch of ways. That being said, it also lacks some of the charm of most of the 3D Sonic games. Don't get me wrong, it's better than, say, Sonic Forces, but like Lunistus, there aren't any cutscenes, there's no voice acting, there's nothing really outside of the gameplay here. It does seem like this game is earlier in development than Lunistus though, so there's definitely still potential for them to add things like that. It just really depends where they want to go with it. 3D platformers don't necessarily need a story or cutscenes, but if done right, it can add that extra bit of flair to really make a game stand out as a fun and memorable experience. Number 5, Soda Powered Penguin. This game falls into some of the modern indie game design cliches. It reminds me a lot of other indie 2D platformers, but it's just creative and fun enough to get away with it. If I had to compare it to something specific, it kind of reminds me of, like, maybe Shovel Knight mixed with a Sonic game? But there aren't many games where you get to slide around as a penguin. And sliding around as a penguin is fun. There need to be more games with sliding mechanics. Dude, someone should make a game where you get to play as like a seal, or a sea lion, or a walrus, and you could slide around all over the place on your little seal belly, flopping around and stuff. Be great. Number 4, Mushroom Kingdom Fusion. This game is so crazy. It's like what I would have made as a 6 year old kid if I could. Just the weirdest mashup of characters smashed into a 2D Mario game with surprisingly fun and accurate mechanics. If this sounds fun to you, give it a go. It's exactly what it looks like. Not really anymore, certainly not any less. Number 3, Power Bomberman. I've had this game on my radar for a long time now, and honestly I'm surprised they're still working on it because I thought it was done. It's like the perfect Bomberman fan game. It doesn't do anything too crazy, it's just a really solid Bomberman fan game with a great, fairly active online community, and if you like Bomberman, you'll love it. I'm starting to see a pattern here. Number 2, Sonic and the Fallen Star. If you like 2D Sonic, you'll like this. Add this up there to the greats like Sonic Before and After the Sequel, Spark the Electric Jester, and Freedom Planet. This fan game is fantastic. The thing with these Sonic fan games is, you know exactly what you're getting into. I can't say too much about them because it just comes down to, if you like 2D Sonic, you'll like this. It plays like a Sonic game, it looks like a Sonic game. This one does have a really good original soundtrack though, so that's cool. And now, I'm gonna get into a big list of honorable mentions, because this was just a great year for Sage, and I was able to try out more games than ever thanks to my Steam Deck. Thank you, Valve, for releasing this beautiful piece of technology. Sonic Colors Demastered. 
why? There was already a Sonic Colors Demastered, and it came out on the Nintendo DS in 2010 alongside the Wii version. I mean, it's cool and fun, but yeah, just why? Same thing goes for the Sonic Adventure DS port, kind of. This is a little cooler and a great showcase of what the system was really capable of. It's a shame we never actually got official games like this while the device was still in its natural lifespan. Sonic and Shadow. A horrible optimization. Couldn't run the game, which stinks because I really wanted to try this one. It looks really cool. But my Steam Deck couldn't run it, my PC couldn't run it, so oh well, maybe next year. Porcupine Panic. Good gameplay, bad level design. Porcupine Panic falls into the modern indie pitfalls in a bad way, in my opinion. You know Meat Boy? It's like that. Just spikes everywhere. If you like that, you'll probably like this. I liked Meat Boy at first, but after a few levels I always got annoyed or just bored, honestly. I sort of get the appeal, and you very well might like this game. It seems pretty solid if you like this type of gameplay, but it's just not for me. Same goes for Scratch and Melody. I personally don't like the music or the gameplay much. I wasn't the biggest Parappa the Rapper fan, but if you love Parappa, you'll probably like this. It's a solid game, just not for me. Sonic Horizons. Cool little gameplay engine, but not enough game to judge. It was good fun for maybe a half hour or so, but yeah, just not enough there yet. Velocity High Speed. Unfortunately, another game that's not very well optimized. This one ran on my computer, but not very well, like 20 or 25 frames per second. It was kind of fun, and I liked the magnet mechanic they used in the game, but for a game called Velocity High Speed, it was nowhere near as fast and action-packed as I was expecting. Sonic Momentum. This game has some cool ideas and really flips the Sonic formula on its head, but sometimes you just can't beat perfection, and I don't know, the 2D Sonic formula was already pretty close to being perfect for me. And when you mess with that too much by adding a bunch of extra moves and some weird, somewhat complicated traversal options, it doesn't quite work for me. The new Sonic Advance mechanics, the homing attack, and the drop dash are about as much as I can handle. I just couldn't quite do all these extra movement options. Linja vs. the Mana Clowns. This one's solid. The main reason it didn't make my list is because I couldn't beat the final boss in the demo. I think it needs a bit more playtesting, maybe even an easy option for casual plebs like me. At least on the bosses, the rest of the game's difficulty was fine. Sonic and the Black Knight HD. An HD version of Sonic and the Black Knight would be pretty cool, but this isn't it. I think you would really need the source code to pull something like this off, and I don't think a fan game is going to cut it. It's not that they did a bad job or anything, I mean, they really did great for what they're working with, but if it were up to me, I would have Sega lend the source code to a competent development team and just let them handle it, because there's no way you're going to make a fully-fledged HD remake of Sonic and the Black Knight as a fan game. Radventure. 3D Sonic meets 3D Rayman? Okay, I'm here for it. I was never the biggest Rayman fan, so that's why this didn't quite make the list, but this is just more 3D platformer goodness. If you like 3D platformers, you're probably gonna like this. Code Bunny. Probably the least Sonic-like game on my list. It plays sort of like Mega Man Zero. If you like that, give it a try. These last two honorable mentions weren't actually at Sage, but I feel like for all intents and purposes they should have been. The reason I want to talk about them is because they both came out recently and they're two of the best fan games I've ever played. One of them's not even a fan game, it's just one of the best indie games I've played. Period? The fan game is Sonic Omens. The budget that it feels like this game had is insane. Apparently there's some big controversy surrounding this game and a bunch of people hate it, but I don't care. Aside from some English second language voice acting, this legitimately feels like a AAA experience. I don't know how they did it. If you like 3D Sonic fan games, you need to play this one. Seriously. The gameplay, the cutscenes, the voice acting. I actually like the voice actor they got for Sonic in this better than the current voice for Sonic, like the official voice. Both of them. He's better than Ben Schwartz, way better than Roger Craig Smith. He actually sounds a lot like Jason Griffith, which is kind of weird and nostalgic in the best way possible, and I love it. Tails, watch out! And the indie game is Spark the Electric Jester 3. The entire Spark trilogy is such a fantastic love letter to the Sonic series. If you like Sonic, you have to give these a try. Spark 1 is like Sonic 1 through 3, but with more combat. Spark 2 is like Sonic Adventure 2 with more combat. And Spark 3 is like Sonic Adventure 2 2 with more combat. For me, the combat is the worst thing about these games, and that's not to say that it's bad. It just takes me out of the zone a bit when I'm looking for some high-speed platforming action. Thankfully, there's not too much of it. Most of the game is high-speed platforming, and that's where the game really shines. It's fun, it's engaging, it has mostly good level design. The story could use some work and there's no voice acting, but hey, maybe in a Spark 4? And number one, Sonic Encore. This is what I'm looking for when I partake in the Sonic Amateur Games Expo each year. Games like this. 
It takes the 3D Sonic formula and just runs with it. Much like Spark 2 and 3, this could be a fully fleshed out 3D platformer in its own right, and I can't wait to see what else this developer does. It's not quite as good as Sonic Omens and Spark 3, but again, those weren't actually at Sage, so I have to give it to Sonic Encore. It's just a bunch of fun to boost around these stages with the different characters and the different gameplay options. It's not too complicated, but it's got a fun physics engine, it feels sandboxy, it's fun to just move around in. It does have some quirks, and Ray the Squirrel kind of breaks the game, but it's just fun when a game allows you to do that. And sure, the levels are all based on old levels from the 2D games, but that's just the aesthetics. Other than that, the levels are totally designed from scratch from the ground up, and Sonic Encore just oozes creativity as a whole. So that's it! What did you think of Sage 2022? Were there any hidden gems I missed? Maybe you didn't even check it out this year, but still watch my video because you're just a great person. Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.